Hello viewers, my name is Jay and I am the other half of the channel Liz and Jay Doing Life. As you can see we have reached our final destination which is neither Portugal nor Spain nor Italy but it is Normandy, France. In this video I am going to take you on a tour around our new property and I am going to show you the things we had to do to get everything up and running. This time of the year we have lots of rain here in Normandy. This is why wellies are an absolute must. The property itself consists of about 1,5 hectares of land and as you can see there is a big barn standing here on the upper part. Judging from the light fittings and the electricity fittings it dates back to either the 1940s or the 1950s. The light switches are not connected anymore to anything but they are the good old black Bakelite and I think this is, has quite some charm. Let's have a look inside what uh, we can find inside the barn. Obviously everything is full with old stuff, old barrels, old wood. The floor is covered with layers of uh, cow poop and other things, I don't know what. and. Um, even the corridor is lined with old equipment, gas bottles, lawn chairs, whatever. And here in the main area there is old kitchen parts and uh, an old table saw with an English plug of all things. Looking at the outside, as I said, the property is relatively big and covered with brambles. Brambles and ivy. That seems to be the main things which you have to battle. However, that is, there are worse things in life and uh, this is what I chose or what we chose actually. And uh, yeah, our new life and on the new farm has started with this in these days. In preparation for the arrival of our furniture, it was necessary to remove this uh, layer of cow dung from at least one part of the barn and as you can see that was quite the job but eventually I succeeded.
Afterwards, it was necessary to take care of internet access because obviously I'm a YouTuber and I need to upload my work. Additionally, uh, the other part of this channel, Liz, she is an avid gamer and also needs reliable internet access. Uh, we researched quite a bit and um, eventually it turned out that Starlink was the best option. Uh, to, what you see here is my little Starlink dance. Uh, jokes aside, I'm looking for obstructions because Starlink is uh, dependent on uh, a clear view on the open northern sky. And uh, if that is not uh, given, then you can just uh, forget the connectivity. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to find the optimal spot. And once that was done, I started digging the hole for the Starlink mast. Yes, I'm uh, trying to use, or I'm going to use a mast uh, to get a little bit of elevation and get the antenna away from the ground. working I had two spectators who unfortunately got bored very quickly. Eventually the hole was dug and it needed to be quite the hole, 60 centimeters deep and 50 centimeters diameter. Uh, there also needed to be a trench dug to lay the Starlink cable into toward the house because here uh, on that field we are about 25 meters away from where the cable enters the house. And uh, we can see you truly being busy straightening the mast and getting it ready for uh, concreting. product and the master of disaster trying to straighten it out properly in two dimensions and uh, now he is happy with the result just giving it a, a slight nudge to the one or the other direction and now we can turn to getting the concrete done. was my first time dealing with that stuff and I have to say I researched quite a bit on the interwebs how to do that. I came across a thing called dry pouring and uh, if you need to position a mast like this into the ground forget dry pouring. This might be usable for a certain thin slab but here we want to make sure that um, the concrete is mixed properly and that there are no dry pockets in between because uh, the mast together with the antenna on top of it will get 
will catch quite some wind. And we want to avoid that the wind blows it over and yeah, then we have to start the whole work again. Particularly here in Normandy, we have quite some strong winds because we are closer to the coast. And if you followed the news, there were quite some storms around Christmas and New Year. And I'm not keen to pick up my antenna somewhere on the field. So I decided to do this properly. As you can see, I'm mixing it traditionally with a shovel. And uh, what we have here is about 60 kilograms of uh, concrete. It's already a mix with, uh, of cement with aggregate and I just have to add water. I thought it would be easier to, to mix that stuff, but uh, it turned out to be, this is quite the chore because you have to make sure that you get it mixed thoroughly. And if you add too much water in one go, then uh, you have a sloppy mess somewhere which goes everywhere and uh, a dry clump of uh, concrete on the other side. Once I was happy with the mix, I poured it into the hole and um, well, in this case, I wasn't too worried about the fact that I had added maybe a little bit too much water, but uh, actually we are, I am pouring the foundations for this mast, so uh, it doesn't actually matter that it's a little bit liquid. It's actually better because eventually, the um, when I reach the last bit, it will even itself out and find its level, so I don't have to worry straightening it out with a tool or so. Also, my worry that I might not have enough concrete proved to be wrong, because together with a few stones which I found on the field, which I put into it, into the circle, in, into the concrete as ballast, that helped to fill up the hole properly. And as you can see, it is really enough. It was even a little bit too much, so that it actually ran into the trench a little bit, but that didn't. I had to let the concrete cure for quite, a, quite some time because the, our temperatures were pretty low. Usually concrete sets to a good strength within 48 hours. I gave it much more uh, and I let it cure for actually almost a week until I removed the supports for my mast. Here we can see the results after a few days and uh, I'm actually breaking a piece of concrete between my fingers to see how far the curing had gone and obviously and at this stage it still needed some time. Following my check of the concrete, I decided to take a little walk down to this shed which we see here in front of us. And it turns out this is an old bakery. There is a huge bread oven in the back. However, the whole structure is not in the best shape. Sheep have been living in there for the last years and nobody really took care of uh, of the state of this thing. As you can see, there is uh, quite some work to be done to make this suitable or usable, actually, <laughs> even to repair it to a state that it doesn't fall in in the next few years will be quite some work. the back of that building and the consistency of the cob structure and here beneath that blue top which is in tatters we see the old bread oven. Here in 
the front of me, my two spectators. In the beginning there were five sheep, but the neighbor has decided to sell them off after we've arrived. And in the meantime, even these two are gone. To conclude that Starlink story, here we see the ducting into which I put the Starlink cable. You must remember the Starlink cable is not barrier rated. And here we see how I let it out across the field toward the mast. There is still some cable left over, which I'm going, or was, which I pulled into back to the house. And there we see the Starlink antenna still in its transport position. Just to break a little bit, here is the Starlink speed test after I connected everything to the router and did the initial setup, which was really super easy. And as you can see, we can get quite a good transmission to the satellite. Um, yeah, it takes a few hours until the router, the antenna and the Starlink network are swung into, into gear basically and eventually you will get proper speeds up to even 300 megabit per second. This brings me to the end of this video and I hope this will be one of many to come. If you liked this video, it would be awesome if you could leave us a like, a comment and maybe even subscribe to our channel. For now, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.